And good evening. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, please let me know in the chat if you can hear me and see me and the audio is all okay. Um, even if my previous stream earlier this afternoon is all okay, that's no telling. Anybody who does live streaming will tell you that within the space of an hour, everything that was working can go wrong. So yeah, please let me know if everything is working fine and welcome to a solo playthrough of Stroganov. Now, before we start, I've got a few things to mention. First of all, this is a sponsored video. Game Brewer asked me to create this video. Or was it that I asked Game Brewer if I could create this video? So Game Brewer is a company that I've done some work for before, and I spoke to them about what games they've got coming out in future, and they mentioned this one. Andrea Stedding, it's wrong of me to say one of my favorite designers when I've only actually played a few of his games, but Hansa Teutonica, um, Gugong I've not played, but lots of people said it's really good. Stauffer Dynasty, I personally believe, is criminally underrated. Yeah, really good designer, so I was very keen uh, to cover this game because of the de designer's pedigree. Also, Game Brewer do uh, really good components, and the rule books are generally pretty good. So yeah, um, I'm going to be doing the solo playthrough tonight. Now, I know Rado's put a video up earlier on today. He did a two-player playthrough. Tonight, I'm going to be covering the solo game. And a couple of things to mention before we start. This is a prototype. Now it is a very good looking prototype and I think this is the final artwork, but the components here, what you see is a prototype, okay? Now you may not think that from looking at it, but for example, these story markers here, I do not believe these are gonna be discs. I believe these are gonna be something else. Same with these markers, which also look like discs. These are gonna be something else. And I think, and I might be wrong, but these tokens for horses, um, yeah, I think these are, I think these, are going to be, um, yeah, sound okay, apparently. Okay, yeah, uh, the, these tokens, I think these are gonna be little uh, miniature meeples. Sound is sk still skipping. Right, interesting, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> again, I did a stream earlier on today, I've changed nothing, but what I can do is I can remove the noise gate setting that I've got enabled. But David's not getting any skips. Russ is here, David's here. So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, I mean, yeah, I've heard that depending on which, uh, which device you're watching it on, depending on the latency setting, you might be getting any skips. But anyway, so yeah, so that's the, that's the first thing to mention is this is a prototype copy of the game. The second thing to mention is whilst the solo rules are working and they work well, the developers are still tweaking things. So what that means is, what you see here is going to give you a very good idea of how the solo game plays. But if you were watching this video, for example, in a few months time or whenever, whenever the game comes out and you go, wait a minute, Paul's playing it completely wrong. Something might change between now and when the actual solo rules are uh, completed. Thank you, David. No skips from a lot of people, but some people are getting skips. Who knows what that is? Right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's crack on. Now, the solo game is me pitted against uh, an AI player, an Automa player, which is Ivan. Uh, we're going to be using this player board for Ivan. We've got the red pieces on the board for Ivan, uh, and I am the blue player. We're going to be playing the game over, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the main game board. This is the main game board here. Uh, we're going to be playing the game over four years. Each year comprises of four seasons. We have spring, summer, autumn, winter, 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 spring, summer, autumn, winter, Spring, summer, autumn, winter, spring, summer, autumn, winter, then end of game scoring, okay? So this is the flow of the game here. Spring, summer, and autumn all play in a similar way. Those, those seasons play in, a same, in the same way. Winter is special. Uh, and then we basically repeat that four times. We are trying to score as many points as we can get. Points are gonna be tracked around here. Uh, I played a game earlier on today and it was an extremely close game. Uh, we both scored 39 points. So that I think is, is the level that we're aiming for. So yeah, we're going to be playing the game over four years. We are going to score points during the game. We're also going to be scoring points at the end of the game. Roughly speaking, as a very, very high level overview, because I'm going to be explaining the rules more as we go along, we are progressing through Siberia. So this is the landscape here. Now, I've done the setup off camera because there was a bit of setup to do, but we have these landscape tiles here. The first five of them are the starting ones. So they were shuffled and they were put there. Then there was a big stack of landscape tiles, which were shuffled and seven more were laid out there. These landscape tiles are going to go off camera because we're going to need them later on. We are going to be progressing through the year as far as we can into Siberia. Then in winter, we come back home and we start again afterwards. We're going to be hunting uh, animals. You'll see that these um, 
these furs are on here, so we're going to be hunting for furs uh, of different values. We're going to be visiting the villages, the yurts, which is a word I'd never heard before. We're going to take in these cards, which are the Tsar's wishes, what the Tsar wants us to do. Uh, and a big part of the theme of this game is that um, we're going to be creating stories to tell. So there is up here, there is a song track. And what happens is uh, various things that we do in the game will give us these song points. And then in winter, we can basically sing a song and it will get us, it will get us various bonuses. That's a very, very high level overview of what we're going to be doing. I will be explaining the rules as we go along, which means the first uh, year of play is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I'll be explaining the rules as we go along. But after that, we'll, we'll zoom through. Now, let's have a look at Ivan the Terrible. I think it's Ivan the Terrible. So the solo game comes with a deck of 18 Automa cards. Now, these were printed off uh, this afternoon <laughs> uh, because this afternoon I realised, wait a minute, I'm doing the solo game tonight. Let's read the solo game rules. And it says, you will need 18 Automa cards. And I didn't have them. So I contacted Game Brewer, who quickly sent me the cards. Anyway, we have 18 cards. These get shuffled and five of them get taken out at random. However, and I'm going to say this now because I really like this bit. These cards, I don't know if you can see, but in the bottom right, they have letters on. OK, so what you could do, and some of them have more than one letter on. OK, so what you could do is you could shuffle these cards and take out five at random, which is exactly what I'm going to do tonight. But there are six different AI strategies, as it were, and you could actually pick one of those strategies, for example, strategy A, and you take out all of the cards with an A on. You are then left with 13 cards and you can actually choose what the AI focuses on. OK, as I say, I'm not going to do that tonight, but it's really nice that they've included that in there. Uh, so we take out five at random. One, two, three, four, five. That is it. That is Ivan's deck. OK, uh, Ivan is always the start player. So Ivan starts with three horses. This purple horse here, this means three. We have an outpost. Uh, Ivan also starts with one coin. OK, if we look at my player board, I start with four horses. So the white ones are one. Uh, the purple ones are three. Uh, I also start with a coin. I also start with an outpost. Um, and that's my starting setup. OK, so if this were a two player game, first player has three horses. Second player has four horses. Right. Now let's go back to the rest of setup. There are these Tsar's Wishes cards. OK, there are starting ones. There are A ones and there are B ones. We take the starting ones. We give them a shuffle. And we're going to deal out two face up here like this and then the rest we don't need and then we've got a big bag of furs okay <clears throat> oh the designer is watching oh well okay i won't i won't look at that okay we take out two furs and we put one on here and one on here now what happens now is I get to choose which one of those I want. Again, if this was a two player game, the player who is going second would choose one and then the other player would get the other one. Um, what I'm going to take, bear in mind, I've only really played this game once. Um, I'm going to take this top one. OK, so I get this card. This card goes into my hand. Now I'm going to put this card here. If it's to the left of my player board, that means it's in my hand. And the fur, that, that is now my fur. I've got a fox fur. OK, the other card gets discarded and Ivan immediately scores one point. So he's already winning. And we haven't even started the game yet. So Ivan doesn't use these Tsar cards, not the starting ones anyway. The fur is Ivan's. Right. And that is the setup done. We are ready to start the game. So I mentioned we're going to be playing over four years. Each year is divided into four seasons. We're going to start in spring of year one and Ivan always goes first. OK, so in a two player game, you would randomly choose who goes where. But in the solo game, Ivan always goes first. And what happens is you look at Ivan's deck and we're going to reveal the top card of the deck. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal it. The rules say to put it to the right, but for the purposes of the stream, I'm just going to put it um, below. I think you chose first after. Oh, yeah, yes. Hang on. There is one bit of setup I haven't done. Thank you. There are some fur tiles here. I deliberately thought to myself earlier on, I'm going to do this bit on camera just so that you see it. And then I completely forgot to do it. OK, so thank you very much. We have starting furs here. So what I have here is I have some octagonal fur markers. Two, three, two, three, four, five, six and seven. OK, 
They get shuffled together. One of them is going to go here. It's the three. The other ones go in numerical order in here. Now, this is the suggested setup for your first game. So it's two, four, five, six, and seven, because three was there. This is fixed for the whole game. This is the recommended setup, but you can, if you want to, completely randomly shuffle these. It is a variant, variant way on how to play the game. Right. Thank you, Ori, for mentioning that. Uh, yes, I forgot to uh, I forgot to do that in setup, but that is now a setup done. So, as I was saying, let's go back to uh, let's go back to Ivan. So we what we have is we have the new card here, which I flipped over, and we have the back of the previous card. And these all of this information is what we're going to follow. So first of all, Ivan moves uh, a certain number of spaces as per the arrows. So you can see here, Ivan is moving two spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Ivan space forward two spaces on there. There you go, nice and simple. The rules actually say to stand them up and lie them down when they've taken their action, okay? But I'm going to lie them down just for the purposes of the overhead camera. It's less of a problem in a, in a two-player game. Right, so that was the first part, that was movement. The second part is Ivan goes hunting. And what we do is we look on this little chart here to see uh, how much he goes hunting and whether he takes from the top of the, 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 the row or the bottom of the row. So what this is, is he's taking one fur from the top of the stack, or top of the row. Now, these, these furs were randomly taken out of the bag at the start of the game. What we randomly have is we have a whole load of twos here. So he's taking this otter, there we go, it's a value two, that goes there. Uh, that is the second part done. The third part is one action here, which is always the same, and then another action here, which is different. So this action here is, Ivan will try to claim that landscape tile if it is empty. Okay, it is not empty, there are still two furs on there. So what that means is instead, he does the action of the village. So let's have a look at the village. There are five villages in the game. There are only five villages included in the game. These were shuffled and randomly laid out at the start of the game. And that is the villages set, because the villages don't randomly move around during the game. Um, so these villages are fixed now for the whole game. And Ivan is about to take this village action here, which is to gain a banner. I'll explain the banners later on. That goes there. And also to gain another outpost. So he's going to get an outpost from the supply. You start with one and you get more as the game goes on for things like that. OK, then we do the, the right hand part of the card. OK. Once you know this iconography, it's fine. I played the game this afternoon uh, and learning it, so I think I'm okay now. I think I don't think I need to refer to the rulebook. What this icon here means is that Ivan has to pay a fur tile, fur tile, according to the region that he is in, to take a Tsar card. So let's have a look again. <clears throat> we'll come on to outpost later on. Ivan is in this region here. Here is the Tsar card. And this is the fur for this region. Remember, this never changes. Does Ivan have one of those furs? Well, it just so happens that he does because he just picked one up a minute ago, okay? So what this basically says is, can Ivan pay a fur matching the region that he is in? He can, so he does. That goes in the bag. <clears throat> and what he does is he takes the card. Now, if a human player takes this card, they get to keep it and there's a whole load of extra stuff. If Ivan takes the card, he simply gets the two points and then it gets removed from the game. Okay, that's that's how those cards work. I think that's how those cards work. Um, that's what I did earlier on today. <laughs> Hopefully if Rudy's in the chart, he'll just confirm that, uh, that that is correct. I think that's correct for the A cards. Uh, it might be different for the B cards later on, but that that's how it works for that. And that is Ivan's turn done. OK, did the movement, did the hunting action. That's always the same. This is always the same. This is slightly different. There we go. We are done. It is now my go. So here's how it works when you're the human, when, it, when it's your turn as a human player. First of all, <clears throat> and this is all printed on the board here, you move one or two spaces. OK, so I'm just going to have a look at what's going on here to decide where I want to move to. Um, and I, I think I am going to move two spaces. Okay, so you move two spaces. You always go behind any other player 
that is there already, okay? So then I can pay horses to move further. If I spend one horse, I can move an extra one. If I spend three horses, I can move an extra two. And if I spend six horses, I can move an extra three. So you can, this is one, one use for your horses, is you can use them to move further through the landscape. Ooh, I just noticed something. I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. Um, although I need threes. So let's just, I'm just gonna show you my card. I'm just gonna show you what I'm thinking about here. My Tsar's Wish card that I got, in order to complete this, I need four rabbits, okay, or hares. I need four of them, and the red border means I have to spend one of them. But in order to complete this, I need to have four of them, and they need to be value three. One of the key rules in this game is um, a fertile is a, is a fixed value, and it cannot be used as if it was one less than that. I can't use a fox in place of a rabbit. So a four is a four, a four cannot be used as a three, okay? So there are, way, there are things that you can do to change that. If you spend a coin, when, whenever you are giving in a fur, if you spend a coin, the fur can be of any value, okay? But generally speaking, two threes don't make a six, for example, is what I'm saying. You can't use two threes together as if it was a six. So I'm looking for threes. So I'm looking on the board to see where I can get threes. And I can get threes here, but they're miles away. And I don't want to spend six horses. In fact, I don't have six horses. Um, so no, I, th I think I'm going to stay here. I think I'm going to stay here. Right, that is movement done. The next thing is I get a basic action. So there are five basic actions in the game. They are, these are printed here. One, two, three, four, five. But to do this basic action, you need to spend a fur according to what was printed on here. Okay. The four basic actions are fairly obvious. Coins, movement, get horses, or hunt. We've seen how hunting works. Um, and you get to do one basic action. And I think... I think I'm going to hunt. So when you hunt, you take the top tile or you can spend horses to skip tiles. Now in this case, it's a two and a two, so there's no point in me spending any horses. I'm just gonna take the two, okay? So I'm gonna take that. Next, if I wanted to, I could spend a coin in the same basic action to hunt again. And I'm gonna do this. I'm coin, Money is really valuable and really tight in this game, but I'm gonna spend it and you're gonna see why. So that's going in there and I'm gonna hunt again and I take another two. So I've now got two otters and a fox. Right, that's my basic action done. Okay, next, you can now do one or two main actions. <clears throat> Excuse me, right. Terminology is really important in this game. I'm gonna use the terminology basic action, main action, and advanced action, okay? And I'm gonna try and use the right terminology at the right time. So what I've just done is a basic action. It's one of these things here, okay? You have no choice apart from, uh, you've got to do one basic action, and it's those five there. Now we go into, I can do a main action, okay? And a main action, I do one or two. The first one's free, the second one I have to pay for. And each main action can be either a basic action or an advanced action, okay? So this is where you have so much choice in this game. It's one basic action followed by one or two main actions. I know I'm repeating myself. And a main action can either be basic or advanced. You got it? Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first, for my first main action, I'm going to do an advanced action. Now the advanced actions, there's five of them in the game and they are printed on the board here. You can place an outpost, you can claim a landscape tile, you can visit the village, you can uh, use a yurt or you can take the Tsar's wish, okay? They are the five advanced actions and they are generally speaking based on the area that you are in. You cannot do them where you don't have presence and I'll come on to the outposts later on but for now the advanced action I do has to be in this area. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to claim this landscape tile. That's the advanced action I'm going to do. I w I'm not going to explain all of the advanced actions right now. Um, I'm going to I'm going to just explain the one that I'm doing, which is to claim this tile. So to claim a landscape tile, you have to spend two furs 
that match the region that the landscape tile is in, plus one more fur for every fur tile which is still on the tile. So this is empty, which means it's only going to cost me two. But if I'd have, if that was there, it would have cost me three. And all of the furs that you pay have to match that one. Okay. So because I took this, I can basically claim this tile by spending these two furs. Okay. So these two furs have been spent. <clears throat> these these Cossacks just go on the empty space there. This is now mine. I have claimed this. I get the immediate benefit printed at the bottom. So I get two points. I get a money and I get three horses. Okay. And then I keep this tile because at the end of the game, I'm trying to collect different types. If I get three different types at the end of the game, I get some points. If I get four different types, it's even more points. So I'm going to put that there. I have claimed that. That was my advanced action. And that was my first main action. Okay, I may now do a second main action, but I have to pay for it. To pay for a second advanced action costs this, and to pay for a second basic action costs any fur. This is printed on the board here. It is clear once you've played this game, once you've played half a game, you should get it. And I'm, I'm trying to repeat myself because this was the hardest part of the game for me to, to understand. So it's now my second main action if I want to, but if I do, I have to pay with either a two, if I want to do another action, another advanced action, or any fur at all, if I want to do a basic action. And I don't think I do. I'm, I'm not going to pay to do a second one, okay? However, what I'm going to do is there are three actions that you can do as, I think they're called auxiliary actions, um, and you can do them at any time on your turn. So as well as all of your main actions, your basic actions and everything else, you've also got these three auxiliary actions. And I'm going to do one of them right now. I am going to do this action right here, which is spend one horse, put in a fur, and take a fur of a lower value from the market. So I am basically sending a man on his horse with a fox fur and I'm going to take this rabbit fur out of there. Now I think this goes out of the game. What have, we, have I got something wrong in the setup? I don't think so. I think the setup's all right. Yeah, I think the setup's okay for the outposts. Right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm basically trading for a fur of a lower value from the market. Okay, so I'm just going to check this. Uh, there is an artistic X there, which can be right. Okay, I'm just going to check this in the rules. I just want to make sure that I'm not swapping it with the market. Um, I'm just putting it back in. So here we go. Trading auxiliary actions. Pay one horse to the general supply and one fur to the bag to take a lower value fur from the market. Yeah, okay, I got it right. So this is going in the bag. I'm taking the rabbit out of the market. And then what we do is we replenish. So I've got to move the first green X to the right of the yellow X. The first green X to the right of the yellow X. Well, there's a number two on there. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Because there's a number two on there. Do you cover up the number two space in a two player game? I don't I don't think you do. I think that's right. So that that was a decorative X. It didn't need to be there. OK, Rudy, can you confirm that I have these outposts in the right position? Because uh, if I haven't, then then, yeah, that 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 should be there. Yeah, there's a number two on there and I'm not sure why. Okay. Right, so I've traded with the market. That was an auxiliary action. <clears throat> I've done that on my turn. You can do as many of those as you want. And that's it. That is my turn done. As I say, it's going to be a bit slow as we start playing because I'm going to be explaining the rules. But now, there should only be one free space in the first two regions. Okay, thank you all. I'll just, I'll just move them up and I'm going to put that on there. Right, 
So there should only be one free space in the first two regions in a two player game. Got it. Okay, thank you. Anyway, we're going to Ivan's second turn. So we flip over the next card and we'll follow it through. So this time Ivan is moving four. So one, two, three, four. Uh, then Ivan is hunting one from the one from the top here. So he's going to take another otter. Uh, then does he buy the landscape tile? Well, he only remember he only buys the landscape tile if it's empty, and it's not. And then we've got this. So this is the same as the last one, right? Okay. So he's taking another Tsar card. Um, so at this point, we have a look to see if. He's got a five fur. Now this time he doesn't. Okay. So this time Ivan needs a five fur and only has a two and a four. So what happens is you check a few things. First of all, does Ivan have a fur of the matching number? No. Does Ivan have an eight value fur? Because for Ivan, an eight value fur counts as a wild card. It doesn't for you, but it does for him. No. Does he have a coin? Yes. So if he has a coin, what he's going to do is he's going to give in his lowest value fur and the coin to basically treat this two as if it's a five. Okay. And then he can do this and he can take this card, which again gets two points and then that gets discarded. Okay. And there you go. That I think is Ivan's go done. Yeah. Right, okay, so it's me. The first three regions should have two outposts. Apparently there's some confusion about that in the GB team. Uh, let's blame Corona and video calls. Yes, and if you, if you want to chat to me later on, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can let you know um, about it. But I think we're right now. Okay, so it's my go. And what do I want to do? Well, there's a three here. Remember, I'm collecting threes. So I think I probably want to go here and collect this. So I'm going to move two. I'm then going to spend one horse to move an extra one, right? Now it's my basic action. My basic action is going to be to hunt and I'm going to not pay extra. I'm going to hunt from the top. So there it is. There is a second three. Now I'm looking at the market. Are there any more threes in the market? No. So now I get to do my first main action. So do I want to build an outpost? Do I want to visit the yurt? Do I want to take, do I want to go to the village? Ooh, choices, choices. I want another three. <laughs> I can't have another three. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to visit the yurt. Okay. So let me just show you these yurts. So these yurts, these were shuffled for, there's a big stack of yurts. Uh, these were shuffled and laid out at the start of the game. Unlike the villages where you can continually go to the village multiple times and it stays there for the whole game. The yurts are one use only. Once you go there, you get the reward that's printed on it and then you discard the tile. So this one is get a story point and seven horses. So the yurt gets discarded out of the game. I gain a story point and I get myself seven horses. That's a lot of horses. Okay, that is a main action. If I want to do a second main action, I have to pay for it. I either pay with a five if I want to do an advanced action or a fur if I want to do a basic action. Right. Oh, I've just had a thought. Do I? I think I do. Right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another of these auxiliary actions. So this auxiliary action here, which we haven't I haven't mentioned this yet. Let's just zoom in. This one is spend five horses to basically take any one of these animals from the market. Okay. Or you can take two from the bag, keep one and then put the other back. But I want the five. So I'm going to pay five horses. You might think this is a bit crazy. I'm paying five horses to take the five from the market. That then gets replenished. It's a three. Oh, it's a three. I'm collecting threes and I do have five more horses. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to spend another five horses to take the three 
There you go. I've got myself three rabbits already. I only need one more. And that gets replenished. Again, these are all auxiliary actions. So I can do as many of these as I want. And now I'm going to do a second main action and I'm going to do an advanced action, which means I have to pay for it by spending the five fertile that I just bought. And I'm going to do this action. So this is the village action. This gets me one banner and four horses. There you go. So I'm still doing all right for horses. I've still got six horses, but that's my go done. I did a basic action which was to hunt. I did an advanced action, which was to visit the yurt. I then did some auxiliary actions to buy the five to then buy a second advanced action to then visit the village. That's my go done. Right, it is now, oh, I forgot to move the marker up. We're now in autumn and it is, are we in autumn already? Yeah, we're in autumn already. Right, Ivan's go. So we're moving three, one, two, three. Uh, we're hunting and we're hunting the bottom two from the region that he's in. Uh, yeah, round marker, I just spotted that, thank you. So he's taken these two. Now they're sixes, they're quite valuable. Um, and then, is he gonna buy the tile? No, the tile is not empty, so he visits the village. The village is one story point and one coin. So one coin and one story point. I'll come onto the story points in winter, you'll see what they do. And then, oh, seriously? Okay, well you saw me shuffle these, didn't you? You saw me shuffle the, these cards at the start and we have three cards that are pretty much identical. So I can, I can pretty much guarantee he's not going to be doing that again. But what he's doing is he's trying to take another Tsar's Wish card. Does he have a six? Yes, he does have a six. So he gets rid of the six and he takes this card and gets one point. There you go. He's all about keeping the Tsar happy. And that is it. That is Ivan's go done. Right, interesting. The fact that those three first cards were the same. So now it's my go. There's a three there and I want it. And it is the second one down, but I can do it. I'd like a six as well. Have I got the horses? Yes. Okay, I've got a card here and I'm just gonna look up in the rule book what it does because I haven't had this card before. Because if it is what I think it is, I need to do something. Yes, it is what I think it is. Okay, right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move two, okay? My basic action is to hunt, and because I don't want the one that's on top, I'm gonna to spend one horse to skip that one and take the wabbit. There you go, I now have four rabbits. So that's my basic action done. Oh, the first stretch goal has just passed. Congratulations. I don't know what the stretch goals are, but take a look at the Kickstarter page. Um, yeah. Is it for a free mushroom stroganoff with every, uh, with every copy of the game? It should be, totally should be. Right, so I've done my basic action. I'm now going to do an auxiliary action and I'm gonna, so I should have a look at the card again. <clears throat> so I need to have four value three furs, which is four rabbits, but I only spend one of them. Okay, that's what the red border means. So I'm gonna spend this one, that goes back in the bag. I get one point immediately, and I've now got this special ability. I'll explain what that special ability does in winter because that's when it happens. So I'm just gonna tuck that next to my player board there. Uh, that was my auxiliary action. Now I've got my first main action. Oh, what do I wanna do as my first main action? I had a plan. I definitely had a plan. It was to build an outpost. That was it. So this is not something that we've seen before. This is one of the main actions that you can do. And the cost of building it is actually printed on the space itself. So I have to spend one horse and I'm going to put an outpost there. Now what an outpost does, outposts are worth points at the end of the game, but outposts basically give you a permanent presence in that region. So all of the things that we've mentioned, all of these advanced actions that we've been mentioning, you can actually take them in any region where you have either your, your Cossack or an outpost. So this means I've got a permanent presence in this region uh, with which I can now start taking other actions. So that's my first main action. 
Now, do I want to buy a second action? I think I do. And the second action I'm going to buy is not going to be an advanced action. I'm going to buy a second main action and it's going to be a basic action. So to buy a basic action, you don't have to spend this fur. You just have to spend any fur. And I'm going to spend one of these rabbits. And I can now do one of these five basic actions. And if I spent another three fur, I could actually do two of those. Hmm. Do we do that? Oh. <laughs> or do we do that? Oh, this is this is this is tricky. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hunt and I'm gonna spend a coin to hunt twice. Okay, so I spent the coin, the first hunting gets me the top one, and the second hunting gets me the bottom one. Now I, if I just wanted to hunt once, I could have just spent one. Uh, horse to skip over the two and take the eight, but I actually want the two. Why do I want the two? I can't remember why I want the two. I think I wanted the two for some reason, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. That's what we're gonna do. Right now, it's time to talk about these eights. You may notice that the fur tiles that were placed here are two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no eight. That you do not spend eights to activate any regions. So why are the eights so good? Well, remember, one of the things you can do at the market is that you can trade for a fur of a lower value. So the eights are always good for that. But there's a special benefit to eights. Whenever you gain an eight, and this is printed up here, and this, this is thematic because you're hunting. I've hunted a bear. I've got a bear's fur. You actually get two story points every time you get an eight tile. So I gain two story points on there just for taking the eight tile. Right. So I bought a second main action, which was that. And that, I believe, is the end of the first year. Well, we're about to go into winter unless I want to do an auxiliary action. Uh, and I don't think I do. I think I'm all good. Yeah, we are all good. Explorer track. Thank you. That was it, Ian. I knew why I wanted the two for some reason, because we have a part of the game that I've not explained yet, which is this Explorer track here. And to start on the Explorer track, you need a two. I knew there was a reason. I just couldn't remember. Right, we're done. We're going to go into winter. So in winter, a few different things happen. First of all, income. All players get two horses plus an extra horse for every banner they have. You know, I said I'd mention these banners. OK, so I get three horses uh, and Ivan also gets three horses. Now, Ivan, you may notice Ivan isn't spending any horses. OK, Ivan never spends horses to do anything. But whenever Ivan gets five horses, they get traded in and he gets a point. OK, so that's how it works for the solo game. Five horses, Ivan gets a point. That is income done. Next, we activate cards which have the winter icon on them. And this is why I built the outpost. This card basically says I have a special power every winter for every outpost I have on the board, I get two horses. OK, so I'm going to take another two horses. There you go. Right. The next thing we do is songs. So whoever advanced the furthest into Siberia gains two story points. Whoever is second gets one story point. OK, that's that bit done. Now what we do is we actually now do the songs. So starting with the player who went furthest into Siberia, they can spend story points. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, they can spend story points, as printed on here, to take the relevant story tile and get the bonus that's printed on it. Now, the way that Ivan works is Ivan will buy the best one he can. He's got three story points. This one needs two. This one needs four. So he can only buy this one. So he spends his two story points. He takes this song tile and basically gets one coin. OK. Me, I could, if I wanted to, spend four story points to get this. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. I didn't have to, but I'm going to. So this icon here, this is exploration or getting a trophy. So this is an extra track on your player board. And you move down it one at a time. 
and you re you need the, the 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 exact matching fur to move on to the next space. It's interesting though that you can activate this icon and not actually move your disc and you just get the reward printed to the right. But I'm going to do it. I have this otter fur. I'm going to spend that. This goes down to here and I now get the reward printed on the right, which is two more story points. That's going to do me good next year. This here, by the way, this is end game points. So anytime you see this icon, which is silver rather than gold, yeah, silver is end game points, gold is during the game points. So that will get me one point at the end of the game, basically for that. So that song's gone. I've discarded that. And I think that is that bit, right? So the next bit is landscape tiles. Any landscape tiles that are now empty, it shuffles down. So we slide everything down. We get a new landscape tile that comes out. We populate it with furs. So this one needs four furs. One, two, three, four. They get placed in numeric order on here, like so. The bottom space is only used in a four player game. And then on the rightmost tile, we have a tiger. Now there is a tiger here that I didn't mention earlier, but now we have another tiger here. If more tiles that have slid down, the tiger would only go on the new rightmost one. Okay. Cossacks now return home and they return home in the order in which they were, which is important for the non-solo game. In the solo game, Ivan always goes first. Every season, Ivan goes first. Uh, normally, it is the player who's moved the furthest into Siberia that goes again, uh, that goes next. Right. So we've done that, we've done that, we reset the market. So these tiles go back in and we get six new ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, what have we got? Two twos, a three, two sixes and a seven. Right, next, the songs. If there were any songs still there, they get discarded and then we get two new ones. Now, the game is divided into two halves. The first half you use the A tiles, the second half you use the B tiles. So I'm not just taking the top two off the stack. Well, I am. Um, but the rest of the A's now disappear. We don't need the rest of the A's. Because from year three onwards, we use the B's. So we've got two new songs have come out. Uh, the yurts, the yurts slide down. Now, thematically, if you think about this, these yurts are like, um, they're tents. So these people have basically moved and then we get a new one. And the Tsar's Wishes, they slide down and we get new Tsar's Wishes. Again, these are all in A's and B's as well. So we need two more A's. Sorry, three more A's come out. And that's it. No more A's are needed. So they can go. Uh, we don't need any more of the A yurts. And that is it. That is the end of the first year. So we move on to year two. Just checking the chat. Right, we're good. Year two. Ivan is going first. We're going to reveal the card. Moving one. Uh, we're going to take the bottom fur. Uh, which is this one. So he's got an eight. Now, every time he gets an eight, he gets two story points, just like me. But remember, the eight for Ivan is a wild card. Not for me, but the eight is a, is an, is a wild card for, for Ivan. Okay. Uh, so we've done that. We've done that. Is the tile empty? The tile is not empty. So he chooses to do the village action. And the village action is gain an outpost and get a banner. Okay, and then finally, this one. Okay, so Ivan is going to spend a fur to do the yurt action in the rightmost space where he has presence. This is what this icon means. You see these X's, these X's are the outposts. So basically, we look on the board for the region where he is has the presence, which right now is here because he doesn't have any um, outposts. Uh, does he have a two in order to be able to visit the yurt, because that's what the card says. Spend a fur, according to that, to do the yurt action. He doesn't have a two, 
but he does have an eight. And that's the first thing you check. Well, the first thing you check is, does he have a fur of the correct value? No. Second, does he have an eight? Yes, he does have an eight. So the eight goes, he does that, gets rid of the yurt, he gets a story point, one story point, and three banners. Wow. One, two, three. Okay, there you go. That is Ivan's turn done. So it's now me. Now, we had a plan in year one, which was to do that Tsar card, which we did. But in order to make use of that Tsar card, I need to get more outposts on the board. But in order to get outposts on the board, I don't have any outposts. So I need, I need to get some outposts from the supply over here. And you can do that here. So I think, I think this is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I also would like to explore. <laughs> I also would like some of those. So I'm, I'm going to move two. I'm going to move two spaces. My basic action is to go hunting. I don't have any coins, so I am going to spend a horse to skip over the seven and take the eight. Because remember, an eight gets you two story points. Also, that means I've got two eights. Okay, so that's my basic action. Right, now it's my first main action. I, I need to take this because I need the outposts. So I'm going to do it. My main action is going to be to visit the village. Ivan's there. Hello, Ivan. Visit the village. Take that. Get an outpost. Okay. Do I want a second main action? And the answer is yes. And here's how I'm going to do it. In order to get a second, uh, in order to get a second advanced action, I need to spend a two. I don't have a two, and I don't have a coin to turn any of my furs into another number. But I do have five horses. Oh no! Hang on a minute. I don't want to spend five horses. Ooh. Okay, so Rudy is saying, Ivan is only the starting player at the start of the game, not every round. Normal order rules. Right, okay, so that, that's wrong in the rulebook at the moment, but Rudy's helping work on the game, so Rudy, Rudy knows. Um, but yeah, the rulebook at the moment says that Ivan is the starting player all the time. Well, that, that's the way I read it. Okay, but thank you for that, because I was about to say Ivan is going to have a go next. Um, so yeah, thank you for clarifying that. I want, I'm going to take a two. I just, uh, do I? Yeah, so I'm going to go to the market with one horse and a three. One horse and a three to get a two. Okay. The market replenishes. And it's another two. And now I am going to spend that two to do a second advanced action in this area, which is going to be spend two horses to put an outpost on the board. There you go. Okay, I'm done. So what we were just talking about, for those people um, who might have missed it, is in the first year, it was always Ivan, then me, Ivan, then me, Ivan, then me. And that is because I thought the rules were that Ivan always goes first. But that's not the case, okay? So that that's, as I say, the rule book is still, still being tweaked. And there are still a couple of things to clarify in it. Um, but the normal rules of the game are that players do not simply take it in turns, uh, you know, round and round the table. What happens is, in each season, and we're about to move into summer, it is the player who is the furthest ahead who takes the first turn. So what happened in spring is Ivan took a turn, moved one. I took a turn and moved two. So now we go into summer and I'm ahead, which means I take the first turn. So Rudy, just, just confirm that, that that is correct. So it's, ba it's basically, it's back to me again. Uh, right, and what, what do we want to do now? We want to get more outposts and put them on the board. We also want to move down the exploration track, which is here. So I think this is what we're going to do. Okay, that's correct. Thank you. Yes. I'll chat to you later about the rulebook and, and how I misinterpreted that. Um, I think I'm just going to move one. 
because there's another eight there and I want that eight. I, I do like the eights. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move one. Uh, I am going to hunt as my basic action. I'm going to spend a horse to skip over the six and take the eight. Remember, an eight gets me two story points. There you go. Uh, right, my first main action is going to be to visit this village. This village allows me to do exploration. My exploration track uh, is a three next. I have a three, so I'm going to get rid of the three to move to here. And I now get this benefit, whatever that benefit is. I'm just going to look up that benefit in the rule book very quickly. I think it's use an advanced action of any village that isn't exploration. That's what the icon says to me. So I'm just going to check that. Uh, rewards page. Scrolly, scrolly, scroll. There we go. Visit a village. You can choose any village on the board regardless of the location, but you can't choose the village with the trophy action. Yes. So I can basically go to any of the other villages. Um, I might take this one. Yeah, I'm absolutely taking that one. So that's another banner and another outpost. Yeah, let's go with the outpost strategy. <laughs> Don't know. Right, um, we're done. That was my main action. Do I want to do a second action? If I do, I have to spend a four. I don't have a four. Is there a four in the market? There isn't a four in the market. Do I want to trade in any of these eights? I do not. Right, that is my go done. So, it is now Ivan's go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to turn, I'm going to turn it sideways to show, oh, sorry, I need to zoom out. I'm going to turn it sideways to show that I've taken a turn. Okay, so now it's Ivan's go. And let's have a look at Ivan's card. Ivan is moving two. So we go one, two. Uh, then Ivan is taking the top two in that area. Right, now this is something we've not seen before. Ivan is going hunting and he's taking the top two furs. There's only one. So what happens is Ivan takes that one and gets one coin as compensation for the one that he didn't get. Then we are also going to see something we haven't seen before. Does Ivan buy the tile that he's on? Okay, so this here, we, we've, this is always the same on the card. It's always the leftmost thing on the card. It's if Ivan can spend two furs to buy the tile that he's on, if it's empty, he will. So let's have a look at the tile that he's on. The tile he's on is empty. So to buy it, remember the cost to buy a tile is two of the fur that matches that. Does Ivan have two fours? No, he has one four. Okay. So in order to provide the second four, does he have an eight? No, but he does have a coin and a six. So that coin turns that six into a four. Ivan spends those two fours and buys this landscape tile. So the coin goes back there. Those go back in the bag. These go on here. And Ivan has bought this. Gets two points and five horses. Remember, five horses for Ivan is just one point. So I'm just going to give him three points. And he's now got a mountain tile. Right. Okay. So that is Ivan's go done. And that was that was summer. So now we're in autumn. And it is my go. Remember, whenever you enter a landscape tile, if there's somebody already on there, you go behind them. So now it is my go. And I want to get this other outpost on the board. But I'd also like to buy... No, I don't want to buy that because that's the same one as I've already got. Oh, choices, choices. Did we just move one? I could just move one. Would that work? Yeah, that might actually work. What do I want to move to? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to move two. I'm going to move two. Remember, the further you are ahead, the more story points you get in winter. So do I want to make it three? If I make it three, I'll end up here. But this doesn't actually do anything for me. I need money. I desperately need money. But I also like furs. 
Furs are good. Oh, this is this is tricky. Do we take a Tsar's card? No, I want to get this on the board. I'm just going to stay there. I'm just going to I'm just going to move two. My basic action is going to be to hunt. Yeah, I'm going to hunt. Okay, and then as my main action, I'm going to choose an advanced action, and I'm going to spend one uh, horse to put that on there. There you go. Uh, any chance that the land tile can go under Ivan's completed Tsar's wishes? Oh, I think, yeah, you're not talking now for me. Maybe you are. Right. I think that is it. I think that is the end of autumn for me. I, I'm not going to do a second action because I need a five or I could do a second basic action. I don't think I want to do a second basic action. I'd love to do another advanced action and I'd love to do this but I don't have a five and there isn't a five in the market. Okay, so I think I'm done. Right, Ivan's go. Where is the cake? <laughs> Monique's here. The cake is here. Uh, I will be eating it. Uh, there is a piece for you at the end. So after the game is finished, uh, there's a piece for me and there's a piece for you. Paul Linkhouse here in the chat as well. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. Thank you for joining in. Right, we are on Ivan's turn. Ivan is moving too. Yes. I was really hoping he was only going to move two because that puts him behind me on the track. Okay. Hunting, he's only hunting one, uh, but there isn't anything there, so he gets a coin instead. He's so rich. Then, is he going to buy the tile? Well, he, he will try to buy the tile because it's empty. It's going to cost him two fives. Does he have two fives? No. Does he, he, he can use a six and a coin for one five, but he doesn't have the second fur. So he doesn't do it. Instead, he visits the village, which gets him a banner and four horses. Four horses plus the one that he's already got is a point. There you go. Right. Then he explores. Okay, so he's not done this yet. I've done it, but he's now exploring. So he needs a two. Does he have a two? No. Does he have an eight? No. Does he have any other fur and a coin? Yes. So he spends the coin, spends the fur, advances to there, immediately gets one point, and will also get a point at the end of the game as well. So immediate one point. That is it. We go into winter. Okay, so winter is here. First of all, income. I get two horses plus three for my banners. So I get five horses. Ivan gets, look at all these banners. <laughs> He's got one, two, three. He's got five banners and an extra one. So that's what? That's five, six, seven, that's eight horses. So he gets one point and three horses. Okay, now the special ability of my card kicks in, and this is where I've done really well with this one, because I, ha I have three outposts on the board, that gets me another six horses. I think that definitely deserves a celebratory drink. Anybody who has a drink, please feel free to take one, because I think I've done that really well. If I do say so myself, it's only halfway through the game, and I've got three outposts on the board. You can only have one outpost per region, by the way. Okay, so that's that. Next, who's furthest ahead on the track? Me, two story points. One story point for second. And now, songs. Which of these songs do I want? Now, that one is worth an advanced action. That one is worth an outpost. Well, I'm going to take the advanced action. I'm going to spend five story, point, uh, five story points to sing this song here. Okay, so this song allows me to do an advanced action anywhere on the board. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of choices, isn't there? I'll tell you what, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this Tsar's Wish card here. And that goes into my hand because I've already accomplished it. Okay, now I think I can only do that on my turn. And we're not currently on my turn, we're in winter. Um, 
Ivan spends four story points to take this one, which gets him an outpost. There you go. That's the songs done. Now we slide all of these to the left. We get a new one. We put three new tiles on it. So we have a three, we have a seven and we have a six. Okay, and because the rightmost tile now gets a tiger on it, I'll explain the tigers more when we get one. Um, that's that done. Cossacks reset. Again, they maintain their order. Uh, we recycle the market. One, two, three, four, five, six. They all go in. Get shuffled up. Fine load of horses. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, two twos, five, and three sevens. Okay. And you might just think, if you're watching this and you're trying to learn how to play, that I'm just taking random stuff out of the bag and I'm putting it here. But what everything that I'm taking out is affecting what you do in the game because you're trying to match furs and you're trying to see what's in the market. And it's actually really important. Um, and it took me it took me one and a half games to realize it isn't just drawing random tiles and putting them on the board. It's like, oh, well, the fact that there's now that there means something else. We've done the market. Songs. There are no songs. We get two new songs and this time we're in the bees. So here we go. Two new bee songs. Um, yurts. The yurts all go down. And we now get a bee yurt. And then the Tsar cards. So these all slide down. And we need some bees. I think this is a bee. Yep, that's a bee. There you go. That is winter done. We are now moving into spring of year three. And it's me first. So. I'm going to move. Now, do we move? I don't have any money. I just don't seem to get any money. Um... How far do we want to move? We can't put another outpost there. I kind of want to do that. But there's also that. Hmm. Do I want to buy this? Ooh. There's so many options with this. Because of the fact that you can do the auxiliary reactions during your turn, which allows you to trade with the market, there is a lot of options. And I'm having a look at these cards to see if there's any of these cards that I want at any other time during the game, because that one looks quite nice. But also that one looks quite nice. Yeah, there is a lot of choice. I'm definitely moving two. It's whether I want to move any more. Because remember, I now have outposts here, here and here. So when I'm doing um, an advanced action, I don't have to do it where I am. I can actually do it in any of the area, any of the regions where I have an outpost. Not the basic actions, only the advanced actions. I think, yes. Oh. Is that where I go? I think it is. Okay, that, that's where I'm going, final answer. Basic action is going to be to hunt, and I'm going to spend a horse to skip over the seven and get another eight, because I'm absolutely addicted to eights, because that gets me stories. They were just telling loads of stories about Paul and his four bears. Right, also on my turn, I am going to complete this Tsar's Wish card. Uh, I need three bears. I have four. I give in one of them. I get two points, and I took this underneath, which means every spring, and we are currently in spring, I get to do an ad advanced action for free. And I do an extra advanced action. So I'm just going to tuck that there. I think that's how it works. Uh, claim your Tsar card. Yes, that's what I've done. So I did my basic action. I've done an auxiliary action. 
I now have my first advanced action, which is going to be to visit this village, which gets me a banner. There are only 12 banners in a two player game. Yeah, Paul and his four bears is the sequel to Goldilocks. Absolutely right. <laughs> and I get another outpost. This is interesting because in the game I played this afternoon, I didn't get any outposts whatsoever. And in this game, I've really gone for it. So do I want to buy a second main action? No. Yes. Don't know. Ah, uh, What would I do? No, I don't. I'm done. That is my go done. It is now Ivan. Flip the card over. We're moving three. So he's moving ahead of me. One, two, three. Uh, he's then hunting the bottom tile, which is that one. Uh, then is he going to buy the tile? No, because it's full. So he visits the village instead. Village is exploration. Does he have a three? No. Does he have an eight? No. So he uses the four with a coin to move to there and gets a point. So one point. I'm flying through this now quite quickly just to show you that this bit does actually speed along quite quickly once you know it. Um, and then what he's doing is he's doing his other action, which is also exploration. But at this point, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have a fur. He doesn't have any fur at all. So he actually skips his action. Oh, bad play, Ivan. Sorry about that, mate. Not. Okay, now, did I get my bonus free action? I didn't, did I? See Rudy's comment above. Yurts need to be swapped out. Oh, what have I done? Uh, a yurt tile and star wishes need to be replaced. Oh, okay, sorry for that. I got that wrong. I didn't realise, but in when you go to year three, you actually get rid of all of the A's on the board completely. Okay, thank you for that. I'm glad you spotted that now. So they don't just slide down. All of the A's actually go and everything. Is that a B? No, that's an A. Right, okay. So good job, haven't used them. So these kind of make sense because these are these are different ones. Yeah, thank you for that. And apologies if you mentioned that earlier and I missed it. But I didn't do that in the test play this afternoon. So yeah, I should have done. Okay. There you go. Anyway, what I was saying is I've got a special ability that I get an extra advanced action in spring and I and I haven't taken it yet. Okay, the rules might be clear enough. I just I just might not have read that bit. <laughs> Put it in big red letters. So yeah, so uh, just just going back a bit, I forgot to do my extra advanced action. So what would I have done? Uh, and that advanced action is anywhere that I've got an outpost or where my character is, which actually is quite a lot, isn't it? Um, I'm going to take this one. It's three story points and a money. There you go. Right, that was me rewinding to there. Then Ivan had his go. So now we're in summer. And at this point, it is Ivan first because Ivan is furthest ahead. Okay, so Ivan is... Moving one, then he's going to hunt the bottom tile, uh, and then he's doing all of this. So there's no tile there, so he gets a coin. Then he's going to buy the tile because it's empty, but that costs two fours, and he has no furs at all. Ivan is a bit rubbish at having furs, <laughs> like he doesn't have any. So in which case he visits the village, which is this, and he can't do that because he doesn't have any furs. Is this right? I think it is. Okay, so then we do this action, uh, which is basically, he's now going to buy the tile in the area which he's got presence in, which is here. And he can't buy the tile because he doesn't have two furs. If that's right, again, these rules are still being tweaked, but we've just had a situation now where Ivan can't actually do, can't, can't buy the tile because he doesn't have any furs. So he uses the village action instead. The village action requires a fur, so he can't do that. And then we go to this action and he can't do anything there either. So I, th I think we've got, I think we've got the rules right. But again, as I say, the rules are still being tweaked and developed. Um, and yeah, this is a situation which maybe there should be a, an alternative on there because otherwise Ivan has had 
a wasted turn and can't actually do anything. Okay. So, I'll go to me. What am I going to do? I've got three eights. What am I going to do with those eights? Do we want to buy a tile from under his feet? Hmm. Now, an eight with money can become anything. But also, I can use an eight at the market to trade for anything I want. Is this my opportunity to get ahead? Do we buy those sevens? Ooh, choices, choices. I mean, I don't have an outpost here yet. So I could just build another outpost. <laughs> Do like me outposts. I think we do. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move two. Uh, my basic action. Oh, hang on. We could actually buy this landscape tile. Yeah, we could buy this landscape tile. So my basic action is going to be just to get money. Do I get money or do I get four horses? Because four horses is almost buying something from the market. No, I'm going to get money. So my basic action is to get money. Okay. My first advanced action oh, I wanted the outpost, didn't I? Okay. Change of plan. I'm not going to get the money. I'm going to go there. Okay. And my basic action is to hunt. Right. Now, my first advanced action is to put an outpost on the board at the cost of two horses. Do I want to do a second main action? I really could do with getting some fours in the market. I don't think I do. No, I do not want to do a second main action. So that is it. That is my go done. Right. We now go to autumn. It is Ivan first. Ivan is moving three. So one, two, three. Ivan takes the bottom tile, which is that one. He's got a fur. He then tries to buy the tile that he's on. It is empty, but he doesn't have two sixes. Uh, and he then explores. But this time he can actually explore because he has the four. So he moves down to there and he gets a point. Okay, at least he did something this turn. Still tweaking Ivan's Furs income. He used to get one fur for each five horses. Recently changed. Yeah, so again, solo rules are still being tweaked, but it's giving you an idea of how it works. To be honest, if they were to change that rule so that Ivan gets a fur instead of a point when he gets five horses, that's not going to impact. It's going to impact the game, but it's not going to impact you seeing how this game plays out. Okay, so there are still still some tweaks being made. But yes, it looks like Ivan running out of furs is quite bad for him. I, I would, I would, yeah, I would definitely try switching that back. So that's it. That's Ivan's go done. It is now my go, and this is my last action for this year. Wow, this has gone quick. This has really gone quick. Um, so how much do I want to move? I don't know whether this matters. Does it matter? Because I've got these outposts, I, I'm in. I have presence here. So I can do anything I want in these regions here. It's just a case of hunting. Hmm. Or whatever other basic action we want to do. And do we want to get ahead for the story? I need I need one more story point. One more story point would be nice. 
And if I can get to the end, can I get to the end? Oh, not quite. Yeah, not quite. I'm trying to get to the end to get an outpost in there. That would be great if I could. Um, well, there's a five there and there's a five there and there's a five in the market. But if I take that five and that five from the market, I can take that tile. But that's the same tile as I've got, ah, which I don't want. Yeah, remember, you're trying to collect different terrain types for the end game scoring. I can do with another four. Is there another four anywhere near? No. Is there a four in the market? No. I'm a bit stuck. I'm a bit stuck as to what to do. I'm going to be getting loads of horses coming in soon, which is great, which means I can basically take loads of stuff from the market when I need it. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move two. I'm going to spend one horse to move one more. I'm then going to hunt. Okay, I'm going to spend the coin to do two hunts. Okay, I've got loads of furs. I've got a two, a five, two fours, three eights. More furs than I know what to do with. Right, so that was my basic action. My advanced action, I can't claim either of these because I don't have two fives. Oh no, I can get a two, I can get it. Yes, I can do it. So I'm going to spend five horses to go to the, no, 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 not five horses. I'm going to spend one horse. Yeah, I'm going to spend one horse to swap an eight for a five. Because I've got these eights and I don't I don't need all of these eights. Okay, four comes out. And then, as my advanced action, I'm going to buy... Ooh. I'm going to buy this one. Yes, because I don't want... Yeah, I mean, I could buy that if I had two fours. No, I'm buying this one. So I get three points. One, two, three. I get a money. And I think that is I take two tiles out of the bag and choose one. So I've got two terrain types. Okay, here we go. How much will this game cost? It's a good question. It is on Kickstarter right now. So you can head on over to the Kickstarter page. Um... And it's on there. So we've got a two and a six. I'm going to take... I'm going to take the two. Okay. We're done. That is autumn. Oh, I have to spend the two fives. Yeah. Otherwise, that would be cheating. Okay. So we go into winter. Right. Horses, I get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I get fourteen horses. Right. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, minus one. Ivan gets five, six, seven, eight. Plus the three that he's already got is eleven, which is two points and one horse change. Okay, that's the horsey bit done. Now, who advanced furthest ahead? Ivan did, so he gets two story points, I get one. Buying of songs, Ivan can't buy either of them. Okay, I can. I can get, if I spend nine story points, I can get one point and an advanced action. And the advanced action can be anywhere. So which of these advanced actions do I want? Because there's a there's a lot of them. Yeah, wow. There's a lot of advanced actions now. Um, I'm looking for terrain types. That I don't have. Do we go down the exploration route? Uh, 
So here's what I think I can do. This is, this is a rules question that I have, if Rudy is still here. Can I use these auxiliary actions in winter? Because if I can, there is something that I'm going to do right now. But if I can't, then I won't. Um, yeah, so that, that is the question. Can you do auxiliary actions in winter? While you're... Uh, while I'm waiting for a reply, I'm just going to have a look in the rules for auxiliary actions and see what it says. I don't think you can. My, my guess is that you can't. Auxiliary actions may be taken by the active player at any time, as many times as they want during their turn. So yeah, it's worth clarifying whether you can do auxiliary actions in winter. Um, I'm not sure you can. Oh, you can. Right. We should definitely put that in the rules. In which case, I'm going to go to the market with a horse and an eight. I'm going to trade in the bear for an otter, which I think is a, a fair trade. Okay, that gets replenished by a deer. And then what I'm going to do is my advanced action from the song is going to be to spend three otters to buy this tile. So remember, I can buy a tile. Oh, I, I can do an advanced action from anywhere on the board. And the cost to buy a tile is two plus one for every fur tile that's on it. So because there's a fur tile on it, I, it costs three twos. Um... Could you purchase the river tile in region one, says Ian. Yep, that's, yeah, I'm one step ahead of you. So those go in and I actually get this fertile. And that is mine and I get two points, a coin and three horses. Have you seen how many horses I've got? <laughs> What's a group of horses called? I should know that and I don't. Right, I've got a set of three. That's going to be worth points at the end of the game. That was the songs. Right, now we do the landscape tiles. All of these slide down. I'm going to reset the Cossacks now. In fact, I would probably suggest if you're, well, Rudy, you are still watching, I would have the resetting of the Cossacks prior to the sliding of landscape tiles down, only because there's gaps. And it makes it easier to do that before. So we get two new tiles. These tiles get repopulated. Now, a quick note, rules-wise, these tiles are empty, but they do not get repopulated. It's only new tiles that get populated. Okay. So three go on here. So we have a three, four, and a six. Uh, and then here we have a two, two fours, and a six. And remember, we place a tiger on the rightmost tile. So not on this one, but only on the rightmost tile. More tigers will gradually appear as the game goes on. Right. Okay, so that's that done. Cossacks have been reset. Market, the market is changing for the last time. I'm getting quite excited about this. I mean, I've no idea who's going to win. And bearing in mind, I'm not that good at the game, I don't think. I think I'm playing all right, but... I mean, obviously, I'm live streaming it. Live streaming means my concentration is not completely on the game. But I'm I'm seeing, and my brain isn't able to cope with it, but I'm seeing points of this game where I would... Again, if I wasn't live streaming, I would be stopping and I would be thinking. Because there's definitely a lot going on and there's a lot of factors to take into account. Done that. Songs. The song disappears and we get two new ones. Oh, that requires 12 story points. That requires nine. Um, yurts. That slides down to there. That slides down to there. We get a new one. And Tsar's wishes. No, we're ignoring him. <laughs> right, we are good to go. We are in spring of year four. It's Ivan first. Ivan is moving one. He's taking the top tile, uh, the top fur, sorry, which is the two. Uh, then he's buying the tile, but it's not empty, so he visits the village instead. So he gets his last outpost. Not that he's doing anything with those outposts. And a banner. 
Uh, and then, oh, he's placing an outpost. There we go. So this icon here is he's going to place an outpost uh, if he has a fur of the respective value, which is a two. And he does have a two, but he can't because there's no space for it. So sorry about that. In which case he takes an outpost, but he's already got an outpost. So there you go. He, it's another it's another inefficient turn for Ivan where he can't do what he wanted to do and he can't even get the backup. He can't, he can't get that because he's already got all of his outposts. Sad face. Sorry, mate. My go. Right, I've got three actions left in the whole game. Well, three, three turns left. We want to buy stuff. We want to buy more landscape tiles. Which one am I missing? This one. I'm never going to get there. Oh, this one. Can I get there? No, I need, I need like a bazillion twos. Well, I've got coins. I tell you what, we could do it. We, we could do it and it's probably worth it. So let's do it. I'm going to move one. I am going to hunt. I'm going to spend a coin to hunt both of these. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to spend five horses to go to the market and get the two. That gets replenished. It's a six. Okay, now I need another two to buy this tile. I don't have a two, but I have a coin which can make anything else a two. So I think I'm going to do it. The coin and the eight. The eight becomes a two. Spend the two. I buy this because now I have all four terrain types. It gets me two points, a coin, and three more horses. Because we need the horses. We're, we're running short. Did we get an answer in the chat for what um, a group of horses is called? It's not just a herd, is it? What is it? I don't know. Right, we're done. That was my advanced action. Do I want to? No, I, yeah, that's it. Oh, and I get a bonus one. I get a bonus action. Uh, ooh. I might buy another landscape tile. I could absolutely buy another landscape tile and I could go for this one, which is five points. Five points seems quite a lot. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to use my bonus action to buy this tile, which costs me two fours, which I have, and gets me five immediate points. I'm in the lead. Okay, there we go. A herd. It is a herd. Right, okay, cool. Um, right. Done. We stand up. We go on to summer. It is Ivan's turn. The game is reaching its climax. Ivan moves three spaces. You do not count the blank spaces. We go to there. He hunts. Again, there's no furs, so he gets coins as compensation. Um, so he gets two coins because he was hunting twice. He buys the tile, but he doesn't have two fives. Um, and then he puts an outpost on. Right, at this point he can. He needs to spend a five. He doesn't have a five, but he does have a two. A two with a coin means he can put an outpost on. So at least he's done something. At least he has done something. Right, my go. What am I going to do? What What's my objectives now? Um... Is it that? It could be that. If I can get another seven, there's a seven in the market, I'd like this. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to move one, two, and then I'm going to pay a horse to move an extra one. Oh, hello. <laughs> I just noticed this. I don't want an extra one of them, surely. No, that'd be crazy. Right, basic action. What we're going to do is a basic action. Uh, you're asking me how heavy the game is. I'll I'll talk about that in about ten minutes when I'm when we're done with the game. Um, basic action. 
uh, do we just take horses? Do we just, do we move two spaces? Yeah. Right, okay, I might get a tiger. We've not got tigers yet. We've not really done anything with the tigers, but I think because of my outposts allowing me to do anything I want and wherever I want, I am, right, so I'm going to pay one horse to move an extra one. So I moved three in total. And then my basic action is to move an extra two spaces. Okay. I think. But that was my basic action. So I now can't hunt. Yeah, so that doesn't work, does it? Forget that. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. I was trying to be clever then. I was trying to hunt the tiger. <sighs> I mean, I can, I can, I could, I could spend six horses and move there and hunt the tiger because tigers are worth two points at the end of the game. Is what I was thinking. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. I'm going to spend six horses to move an extra three spaces. One, two, three. Okay. Um. Does the IA do village action? Oh, did I forget the village action? Oh yeah, you're right. Thank you, Vladji. Uh, sorry, Zerpi. Yes, he didn't buy the tile and I forgot to do the village action. Okay, so slight rewind. Done. He gets four horses, which is a point. Thank you. I had forgotten that. I was getting too excited. Right, back to me. I've spent six horses to move loads of spaces and I'm now gonna go hunting uh, and I'm going to spend three horses to skip all of those and I'm going to hunt the tiger. So tigers are worth two points at the end of the game if you've still got them, but they can be used during the game as a fur of any type. Okay, so they act as a wild card. Right, so that was my basic action. My advanced action... Oh no, I've now got an auxiliary action, which is to spend five horses to take the seven from the market That gets replaced by this one. And then my advanced action. I haven't done an advanced action yet and I'm gonna choose this region because I have an outpost there and I'm gonna to choose to take this card as my advanced action, which I have automatically done because I've got three wolf pelts. So I get one point. And it goes there as another special ability. Okay, there you go. Done. That was summer. We now go into autumn. It is the last season before winter. Um, and off we go again. So it's me first. And I think... Are we just going to grab ourselves another tiger? I mean, I'd love to be able to take a green landscape, but... I need so many sixes for that. That's not going to happen, is it? Can we get our last outpost on the board? I mean, I don't even have my last outpost. So getting it on the board is going to be tricky. I mean, I could just go here. There's another tiger. Uh, yeah. Okay. And there's a tiger there as well. The tiger's everywhere. Um, and there's a six up there. So we can do it. Right, I'm going to move one. Um, in fact, I've got an outpost here, so it doesn't actually matter where I move to. So I'm going to move two. I'll move two. Uh, my basic action is going to be to hunt, and I'm going to spend three horses to bypass all of these and take another tiger. Okay. My first main action is going to be... Now, just think about this, Paul. Don't get carried away. My first main action is going to be this one. I'm not going to get 12 story points, am I? I'm on zero. This is my last action. 
but it is it is a tiger tile. So yeah, so this is my main action, which I can do because I have an outpost here. So I can do this, which is a story point and a tiger tile. I've suddenly gone down the tiger route. And then my auxiliary action is going to be to spend five horses. No, actually, I'm just going to spend one horse and a seven. Trade a seven for a two. Okay, and then my second main action is going to be an advanced action in this region, which means I need to spend a two to do this, which is a story point and a tiger. So that's gone and that's gone. Okay, there you go. That was my last action of the game. We now do Ivan's last action of the game. I think I've got that right. Oh gosh, he's moving. What's that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, not quite on the same space as me. Well, sorry, on the same space as me, but just behind me, which is important for tiebreakers. He's hunting, he's hunting the top two tiles. Okay, then he tries to buy the tile, which requires two sevens. He doesn't have two sevens, he doesn't have any eights, but he does have two money. Oh no, it requires three, because there's a, there's a thing on it. And he, do, he doesn't buy it because it's not empty. So he does the village action instead, which is to take the highest thing from the market, which is an eight. So he gets two story points. Now he's got three. Uh, and now he explores. His last action of the game is to explore. Does he have a five? No. Does he have an eight? Yes. So it moves to there and he gets one point. Okay, there you go. Ivan is pronounced even. Okay, thank you. Even. That's it. That is all of the actions done. Okay, and that's the reason why there are 13 cards in Even's deck. Because you only do 12, 12 of them during the game, and the top card of the last one has got all of those details on. Right, we now go to Winter. Uh, we do steps one and two of Winter, but we don't bother with step three. So step one, horses. I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen again. So I'll take... 15 horses, put one back. Ivan gets one, two, three, four, five. That's one point and another three horses. So he gets three horses and one point. Okay, that's the horses done. Stories, I got the furthest into Siberia, so I get two story points. Ivan gets one story point, but neither of us have got the story points we need to buy any of those. So we don't, okay? Uh, the songs. Right, and that, that is it. So we don't bother with the administration. We now go to end of game scoring. Uh, and this is all summarised in icons on here. But it's basically, if you have any tiles that give you points at the end of the game, which I think I do, it, it might be nice from a graphic design point of view that these are uh, highlighted as end of game scoring rather than during the game scoring. But let me have a look. I think this is end of game scoring. Yeah, during end of game scoring, score three points for each landscape you have depicted of the same type. So, oh, it's got a white shield on it, which is end of game scoring. I have one of those, which is three points. One, two, three. Okay, next, landscape tiles. So I have a set of four, uh, and a set of four landscape tiles is... Ten? Six. I don't know if this is printed on the board anywhere. I'm not sure it is. But a set of four, four different ones, is six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. That remaining set of one isn't worth anything, and Ivan's set of one also is not worth anything. Tigers. I managed to get four tigers, which is eight points. Okay. Ivan didn't manage to get any, because he's rubbish. Um, trophy track. So I get one point, Ivan gets three points. Okay, next. Okay, the end of game scoring is going to be printed on the game board. Excellent. Um, built outposts. I have built one, two, three, four outposts. That is 10 points. 37 to 47. Ivan has built one outpost, which is one point. Uh, unbuilt outposts. So unbuilt outposts that he has in his supplier worth one point each. One, two, three, four. 
coins, one point for every two coins in your supply. Uh, is it round up or round down? Doesn't say. So I guess round down. So uh, even gets one. Horses and fur. So every five horses convert into a fur, and then you get one point for every two furs. So I've got one, two, three, four. I've got 15 horses, which is three furs. I'll just take these three. And then every two furs is a point. So I get two points. Uh, and even gets one point. Uh, yeah, one point. Okay. Uh, so that was that. And then finally, story points. You get one point for every four spaces on the story track. So I get one and even gets one. Uh, and I think that is everything. Yes, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and a like. And if you are if you are not watching this live, obviously, thank you very much to everybody who's watching this live. But if you're not watching this live, please leave me a comment in the video. Um, and yeah, let me know what you thought about it. But that is it. Now, as I say, bearing in mind from the start, and I'm just going to say this again for those people who missed the start. This is a prototype, okay? Some of the components you see here are very, very close to final. The artwork is very, very close to final, if not final. Uh, the graphic design is still being tweaked a little bit, but overall it's really clear. But the components, some of the components are not the finished components of the game, okay? That's the first thing. And the second thing is this solo mode is still being tweaked and still being finalized. So if you think, oh, well, this game was really easy and, and even didn't do very well and Paul won easily. Rudy's watching this video, right? <laughs> the designer's watching this video. They're going to take that away. They're going to take the information from here and they might possibly make some changes. One of the changes that was being talked about was that uh, whenever even gets five horses, rather than trading them in for a point, he trades them in for one fur from the bag. That, that is something they're going to test because the problem that even had in this game is he ran out of furs too easily. And what I was doing is I was leaving areas empty of furs, which meant he was getting money instead, instead of hunting. The problem is not having the furs meant that he wasn't able to do so many of the actions and there's no backup. So it's like, you know, on this card here, well, he couldn't do that. So he did that, but then he couldn't do that and he couldn't do that either. And he, he, effectively, had a, he ha effectively had a wasted turn. But as I say, they, they're going to work on that and they're going to use the things that have happened in this video. And I've got a couple of thoughts as well that I will share with them. But it gave you an idea of how it plays. So the game is on Kickstarter right now. This was a sponsored video. Game Brewer asked me to create this video. We weren't sure whether I was going to play uh, the solo game. or the, the I mean, the original plan was that I'd have two friends over and we'd play a three-player game. But because of lockdown in the UK, we can't do that. So as it as it's turned out, I have actually covered the solo game, which has only just been made ready last week. And I think this was the right decision um, because the game does have a solo mode. And whilst this is not the finished solo mode of the game, it's given you a very good idea of how it plays solo. Um, yeah, that is everything. Thank you very much to everybody who has watched this evening. I got asked a question earlier on about how heavy I think the game is. So I'm going to be honest with you here. Although this is a sponsored video, I'm going to tell you uh, my process that I went through for learning this game. So last Friday, I did a private live stream, uh, a behind the scenes video for my patron supporters, where I basically got the game out of the box and I read through the rule book and I learned how to play. So I didn't read the rule book beforehand. It was a live video just like this, but a private one for patron supporters, where I learned how to play the game from the rule book. And I will be honest with you. I got very, very confused. And that's not because the rulebook wasn't clear. The rulebook was clear. But the reason I got confused was the actions. And that's why at the start of this video, I spent quite a lot of time trying to explain to you how those actions work. And once you get it, it's okay. But it took me a while to get it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is when you get this game, I think that that might be the bit that you have difficulty in getting your head around. I've got my head around it, okay? And I now understand it. But when I was learning it, it was like, what? So I'm just going to go through it again. 
on your turn, you move, right? Then you get one basic action. Very simple, one basic action. Then you get one or two main actions. Each main action can either be a basic or an advanced. Your first one's free, the second one you have to pay for. And if it's an advanced action, you have to pay for it with the appropriate fur. If it's a basic one, you have to pay for it with any fur, right? And on top of that, you've got the auxiliary actions. So the bit that I think new players are gonna get stuck on this game is not because the rules are complex, is because of the sheer number of choices that you have with, okay, I've moved, right, and I'm now doing a basic action, right? What do I do next? Well, you can do one or two main actions. The main action can either be basic or advanced, and you've got all of these auxiliary actions. And hopefully I showed you tonight the, the possibilities that you've got, because these auxiliary actions, you cannot forget about them. Trading furs in the market, this seems to be what it's all about. So many of the actions that you do in the game require you to spend furs of specific values, and you get those from the market or from the bag. I didn't really do any taking from the bag, but it's all about the auxiliary actions, using your horses, using your other furs to trade for the furs you want to be able to do the advanced actions that you want to do. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, and, and uh, Man versus Meeple have said the same thing. Yeah. So as I say, that that was the tricky bit for me. By the end of last Friday's video, I was like, okay, I think I get this now. And then I played through it again today. And at the start, I just had to remind myself how the actions work. And once I'd done that, I, I was fine. Um, and the reason I've repeated the same words over and over again in the hope that those have stuck in, because I think once you get past that bit, you'll be okay. So how heavy do I think the game is? I think from a rules complexity, the game is is medium weight. Okay, from, from, a, from a sheer length of the rules and the amount of rules in the rule book, it's medium weight, in my opinion. However, the application of those rules, in other words, like I said, the amount of options that you've got mean that even though you read the rules, you know the rules, when it gets to your turn, you're gonna be like, whoa, I've suddenly got so many choices, okay? And that, that increases the complexity of your initial games because you're gonna feel a bit lost. My advice with any game like this is to just play your first game and not overthink it. Just do stuff. This is what I did last Friday. I basically just made random moves just to see what happened. Um, because otherwise you're gonna be sat there for four hours staring at the board until you've worked out the most optimum move. Don't bother with that. Play a two hour game, call it a learning game, make random moves, make loads of mistakes. By the end of it, you'll all have learned from it and you'll be like, ah, oh, now I see what to do. Um, that's that's my advice anyway. So the Automa, the Automa was, 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 I think, really clear. Again, when I first played through the Automa this afternoon, I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna struggle with this. But once, once you've done it, it's actually really clever. You use that, then that, and that's always the same. Well, I say it's always the same. It's always hunting, but it's either the top one, the top two, or the bottom one, or the bottom two, okay? Uh, then you've got this action, which is always the same. Buys the tile that is on, if it's empty, uh, by paying the, the correct furs. That icon there means the matching furs for the for location, or he does the village action. And then you've got this action here. And this action confused me the first time I played it, but now I understand it's spend a fur to take the Tsar's card from the rightmost region where he has presence. Now, if we look at the game board at the moment, if he was to do that action now, he would try to take this card because this is the rightmost region where he has presence. So it's here. If he can't take this one, he would try and take this one because he has presence here. So that that's what that icon means. You basically, you start at the right and you see which one he'll take, but it can only take from a region where he's in. What other questions have we got? Do we have any other questions? Am I missing doing live streams with people around? Yes and no. Um, Obviously, like most other people, there is nothing better than having friends around, sat at the table and playing a game with them. Okay, so I would be lying if I said I don't miss that. However, I'm somebody who is lucky, I think, in that I adapt to the situation I'm in. The situation we're in is lockdown. We can't have people around, so I'm making the best of it. 
What that means is I'm doing loads and loads and loads of live streams, I'm playing more solo games, I'm doing remote playthroughs, and I'm absolutely loving them. These are great, right? So solo gaming is brilliant, solo gaming is really enjoyable. Uh, the fact that there's an audience watching along is, is, is really good. So yes, I, I miss having friends around, but I will be honest with you now, if lockdown continues for another six months, lockdown continues for another six months. I'm not gonna sit here and get angry about it and start complaining all the time. That's the world, that's the way, that's the way things are. There's nothing we can do about that at the moment. Getting angry about it is not gonna help. So yeah, I'm, I'm making the best of the, of a situation and yeah, this is really enjoyable. So, right. Oh, the online Trajan game has just finished. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Brian, <laughs> for letting me know. Um, if anybody has any other questions, uh, I will be available. Obviously, my patron supporters have access to my Slack channel. If you want to talk about the game tonight, I will be available. Uh, I can talk to you in any more detail about it, but I think this gave you a good impression. I am very keen to play this multiplayer, and they did say in the chat earlier on that they're working on a Tabletopia implementation of it. So if you want to try it out yourself, uh, the rulebook is available, it's online, and with the Tabletopia implementation, you can um, you can try it out yourself. Variability in this game, this game is very tactical. And what I mean by that is there is so much what's in the market. You, you can definitely plan ahead. You can absolutely plan ahead of where you want to go and what you want to do. However, there are those other players, those other pesky players that get in the way. They might take the fur that you want. The market is going to change between getting around to your turn. It is very much, I mean, I'm not saying it's you look at your turn and the entire board state has changed. I'm saying you have to be aware of a number of different factors uh, and, and come up with a plan of, of what you want to do. Uh, and it is changing, not constantly, but a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, th I, think the re I think the replayability is quite high, uh, even though the variability, you know, you always use landscape tiles. Sure, the numbers on the tiles are different, but it isn't like games where there's different end game scoring cards. But I think what keeps this game interesting, having only played it twice, um, is the variability at a low level, at a micro level within the game. Um, in the fact that, you know, the different uh, fur tiles and the different numbers makes you have to think what you want to do from turn to turn. I'm waffling now. Right, I think we're all good. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, it's been a really good evening. And uh, ultimately, uh, I hope this has helped you make a decision on whether to back the game or not. I know a lot of you watching have already backed the game and you just wanted to see how the solo game worked. But also, if you watched this video and went, oh, okay, it's not for me, that's fine, okay? Because these videos are intended to help you make a, per make a decision about whether it's the kind of game you want. And I do get messages from people that say, thank you very much, Paul. I watched your stream and I realized it wasn't a game for me. Otherwise, I would have backed it. Now, of course, the publisher isn't happy about that because the publisher wants people to watch the video and go back it. But my job here is to, is to give you that information uh, and help you make a decision about it. So yeah, we are good. Um, no, you haven't missed the cake. The cake is going to be happening in about one minute's time. So uh, yeah, if you want to pop round, I'll get the kettle on uh, and we'll have a piece of cake. There you go. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Take care, and I will see you later on in the week for some more live streams. Cheers, everyone. Good night. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com